Coming to you live from the garage, I'm ATB Dante and this is Scene Analysis. Today we're reporting to you live from a very special kind of show, the infamous an ancient war of musicians that dates all the way back to the 1930s swing era, when big bands led by jazz greats like Chick Webb and Count Basie and Benny Goodman would hold these sorts of competitions in dance halls. Many people my age first became familiar with the classic Battle of the Bands format in the all-time great 2010 film, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. But my personal favorite depiction comes from another film called School of Rock, starring Jack Black. We're gonna dive deep into this battle of the bands, what happened, and the history of the group that hosted it. But before we do that, let's not get ahead of ourselves first. Let's send it down to Sydney on the scene. I'm gonna lie, I can't hear anything you're saying. What's the weirdest thing you've swallowed? The weirdest thing I've swallowed? Fuck. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Like, regularly my own burgers. What do you guys think of the two bands so far? Bro. Bro. The first one, I mean, it wasn't it, but no hate, though, you know what I mean? But the second one, I fuck with it the most, I ain't gonna lie. When, what was, did you guys, like, chew on pencils when you were kids? Oh, yes. I did way weirder oh. shit, but... <laughs> we, we, yeah. Will you marry us? I'll marry both of you. Whoa! When's the last time you threw up? No comment. Roll number one from John Cena. Never let anyone see you. I can't tell you. When's the wedding? Whenever you want it to be. Who was your celebrity crush when you were a child? Oh, that guy from Pirates of the Caribbean, the cute one with the mustache. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. Just like that guy. Have you guys been lovers? Lovers. Uh, we've been brothers. Publicly or? We're gonna take people's phones and vote for Maddie. We're gonna pit pocket. This specific battle of the bands was hosted by a band called Junior Varsity, as well as a magazine called Eternal. Like a lot of modern companies, Eternal is very hard to pin down. There's a lot of adjacent companies to Eternal that I refer to as creative vessels. Pretty much all the most inspiring shit to me creatively right now is these really difficult to pin down companies that do a little bit of everything. It's sort of just this vehicle to do all kinds of cool creative shit. I think that most of the companies that are really pushing the envelope forward in the art space right now fall into this category. I'll say this for another episode, but I've gone down this wormhole a bunch of times where I've talked about a lot of these companies that started around 2017 or 2018, sort of when the whole Lyrical Lemonade thing blew up, that sort of existed art in very, very unconventional ways, but we'll save that for another episode. Anyway, Eternal threw this battle of the bands with Junior Varsity, and it seems like the two groups work pretty closely together. The prize of this battle is a spot on the lineup at a fucking weekend which is a yearly festival that Junior Varsity throws in New York City. The festival started as just a one weekend show series, but over the years, they've become incredibly good at being tastemakers. Artists like Gene Dawson, Tizo Touchdown, Laundry Day, AG Club, The Help, Bennett Coast, Dev Never, they all played a fucking weekend long before they found stardom in music. The band and the festival exist in tandem with each other, cohesively weaving together the storyline that Junior Varsity paints. The artists that they choose to be on these lineups feel incredibly intentional. Every single one of them is a master world builder that has incredible artistic intention. They're never picking artists based on popularity or what's popping at the moment. That's why you see so many of these lineups age so well over the years. They're booking artists with gigantic fan bases that have been built off the back of world building, not artists with hundreds of thousands of Spotify monthly listeners. Music is a huge part of it, but it's not the only part of it. It's equally as about the world that they're crafting with every single lineup they choose. What's your name? Suki. Suki? Um. Oh. Oh. Rough. 
bra moment. Yo, why is he fitted up? He has a whole suit on. He's gone. Huh? I was more of a. Uh, That's two different textures. You don't want to miss you, out. What, what was your pattern? Like, what was your bite pattern on the wood? <laughs> like, was it in lines or did you do like? I don't know. I was more of a. Um, I was more of a book chewing. <laughs> The rise of junior varsity is super, super interesting. They had a pretty massive following on social media before they ever even released music together. And this feels really true to the nature of their band. The duo of Zach and Greg have become incredibly good at garnering social media attention through very cryptic campaigns, as well as incredibly calculated social media releases. From the outside, Junior Varsity kind of just feels like something you want to be a part of. They seem to have this cool factor figured out pretty well, where you don't even exactly know what you're buying into, but you do it anyway, because it's exciting. If the age of the internet has proven anything, it's that the musicians that go on to do really, really interesting things are the ones that truly understand the value of an experience. They sort of have the same undefinable cool factor that something like FTP does or Suicide Boys or some super niche internet musical community that only you and your friends know about. But with that being said, the biggest appeal of Junior Varsity isn't even the internet shit. It's also not even the world building they've done. It's the community that they've managed to curate in person at their shows. A junior varsity show feels like a super monumental event, and they've been able to make it feel this way because they're more than just a band, they're a world and an experience. The genius part about the bills that they're able to craft isn't even the artists that they're picking. It's the way that they're able to tap into very specific and intentional music scenes. There's a bunch of interviews where Greg talks about how one of his main intentions with Junior Varsity is to rage. Over the years, Junior Varsity has managed to become master curators, and like so many of the rock bands before them, they have a very, very good understanding of where the house party meets the concert. This unconventional manner of show promotion was what put Junior Varsity on the map. They weren't building a band, they weren't even building a discography, and not even a feeling. Junior Varsity was building an experience. What you vote for? Maddie Davis. Maddie Davis. The fourth band. The fourth one. Huh? I can't tell you. I forgot their name. Sorry, what? Um, the last one. The third one. I voted for Maddie Jones. Concert is done. Battle of the Bands, done. It was just like Scott Pilgrim. Some of the bands could have been in Scott Pilgrim. It was kind of crazy. Um, Maddie Davis won, along with... Um, Super Violet. Yeah, it's your favorite fucking band. Why'd you hesitate? Super Violet. Anyway, he was violated super early. I was super violated. I went to Battle of the Bands and got super violated. <laughs> <laughs> Microwave waves, like you don't want to mess with it. Don't want to fuck with it. That's me if I was a, if I was a girl. And scene analysis. Annihilated. We annihilated the scene. <laughs>